go to. Do you, do you have one picked out? No, go ahead if you have. <sighs> For all the hosts and guests, what is the story behind the origin of your online pers persona? Phil? Persona. Um, I mean, my, my story is I, uh, I was in college. I was in the, uh, the pre-med program. I, uh, I thought I wanted to be a doctor for the longest time because my dad said that I probably did. <laughs> and uh, it turned out not to be the case at all. I, uh, I hated every class I took. And uh, the big thing for me was I, w I was in college. Um, I, I was like I was rooming with uh, a girlfriend at the time that I hated, but I stayed with because like we just we couldn't afford to. You room to, with to a live. girl in college? Yeah, I uh, I went to community college uh, for I my. You could do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was off campus. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it was. Um, I, I I went to community college for one year in North Carolina, and then. Uh, when she graduated, because she was a year under me, uh, we both went to East Carolina University. It was good, but then we just slowly, you know, you're young, you're constantly changing. We kind of hate each other, <laughs> but we couldn't afford to live separately. So we, you know, we kind of just kept making that work. And so I, I hated school. I hated that. And so I jumped into YouTube first watching it uh, with like the old schoolers like Boheme and Renetto and like guys. City. Chai Town City, who hated me and so many other people. I loved his videos because he was so funny. You liked um, him, but he hated you? Yeah, but I mean, it's like one of those things where it's just like, I, I liked his spiel. Like, I liked that he never pointed a camera at himself, so you never knew who he was. I uh, I liked the his kind of shit talking, even though it was it was so just like destructive of where the community was going. Because um, like, I, same as I loved Renetto and... Uh, and then Renetto uh, kind of turned super, super negative back in the day once the uh, the partner program came about. And he talked about like how it was going to ruin YouTube by involving money instead of it being, you know, kind of the, the growth that that was great for the platform. So anyway, so I was watching all that. Uh, I thought, you know, if all of these schmucks can do it, I can probably do it. Same as everyone that starts now. And uh, and yeah, and I just I started making uh, videos that were reply videos to what was on the front page because back then it was all curated and and you know i was like okay so we'll, i'll just make like a really funny or mean reply video and i'll get views because half the video is on that front page they're uh they're auto accept on the reply videos and that's how i'll get the audience and mm -hmm. that's what i did for the longest time and I, then i started talking about news and pop cult culture because that's stuff that made me angry and uh, I kind of done that now for nine years and somehow turned into a business. I have a theory about the news thing. Like, I, I think that it, if that's the format you go with, it's not going to work for everyone. Mm -hmm. It lasts longer, right? So it, it does. It's, it's, it constantly repopulates. A, a, a typical thing is like, like I'll say PewDiePie, right? Mm -hmm. People will love PewDiePie. That'll be their thing. And then after they watch whatever that number is, you know, 250 hours of PewDiePie, They'll be like, all right, who's next? You know, that'll be their thing because they're connecting like to PewDiePie. Whereas with you, there's two things to connect to. There's you, but there's also the story that you're telling. You're talking about something that's relevant and, and you, you keep the, the pace at you know high speed. And, um, you know, some people who watch your videos are there for what you're talking about. You know, there's like some right. sort of current pop thing. Like if I don't know, I'll make something up, right? Kim Kardashian poses nude. All right. Philly D does a video on that. People who have an interest in that story will watch it, even if they don't have an interest in you. Whereas if you take like a me or a PewDiePie or 90% of the way people do YouTube, their interest in that person fades in the same way that seven seasons into How I Met Your Mother, you don't even care how they met their mother anymore. <laughs> you know, seven seasons into Friends, seven seasons into whatever, you're just like, all right, cut, cut, yeah. no more. Well, this is a, uh, I mean, it's it's a big conversation. It's one that I've thought about a lot since last VidCon. I did a, I did a panel with Zay Frank, and his whole spiel at that time was by making it about personality, make the channel weaker in the long term. While most all of us, it, it's kind of been about the personality, <laughs> right? So my channel is definitely in large part due to the personality, especially since, um, 
don't know. I feel like I'm not as hungry as I used to be where something happened and, you know, I threw up that video in two hours and now Mm -hmm. it's like, I'll stick to my schedule. I'll do what I do. People know to tune in. And so I get that personality more so or the personality pull more so than the content pull. Uh, But SourceFed, uh, like uh, the the other channel I launched, I think that's been an example of, you know, we have a lot of personalities. We have a ton of them so that, you know, hopefully you get attached to you know, two or three rather than just one. So it's not super dependent on the personality, but I love what, what Buzzfe- Buzzfeed's been able to do where in no way is it about the personality. It's just about the content because that makes the brand stronger and that gives you a, a long, a better longevity for the channel. And so I'm not going to change anything about mine to be less about personality, but I think moving forward, it I feel like it, it's got to be more about the content. Also, the thing is, if you hire personalities, <laughs> then the power eventually transfers to them, right? Oh, like, totally. In the gaming world, who's more powerful, Nate Shot or Hex? Right? If Nate yeah. Shot goes and it becomes, I don't know what's after Optic Move, Scope, Nate Shot, then, mm-hmm. you know... Suddenly, I think optic, like the whole green wall thing, kind of drops, and it's the Nate Shot show. Well, I wonder. Yeah, I mean, that's that's maybe, such a yeah, maybe not. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's definitely a specific thing because I yeah, I would never imagine those but, guys separate from each other. But the, okay, yeah. I'll go on that's to um, uh, what is the European driving show called that's in drama right now? Top, top Gear. Top Gear. Oh, right? Top Gear. Yeah. Great show. Right. So one of the Top Gear guys is, uh, I guess they didn't feed him and he got grumpy and he told some guy to feed him and maybe even hit him. I don't know the details, but um, those three, that's a personality show, right? They can just go and start some other show working for C- NBC and fire it right up again. The power isn't with BBC as much as it is with the personalities on it. So, you know, that's yeah. a... It, it just, Something I mean, it's consider. it's something. It's it's one hundred percent a balancing act. I mean, what? Uh, so even if I go back to SourceFed, you know, I had the original three hosts. Um, then you know, you we added people, and then those people go on to different things. We have uh, Elliot uh, Morgan, who is fantastic host. Love him. Uh, he he does stuff for Mental Floss now. We have. Uh, oh shoot! I hate that I'm forgetting her name. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that happens to everyone. She's great, though. She's <laughs> fantastic. She she's the no, core. She, just, she went over to Rooster Teeth. How am I? Meg Turney went mm-hmm. over to Rooster Teeth. Uh, Joe Brett is working with Smosh now. It's it's just kind of, it's it's the door. And I think that's why when you have a show that has several personalities, you're always thinking about the next one. Um, because I see, I see SourceFed and the other channels, you're never going to have anyone. Like, you're never going to have Kevin Pereira for life, you know? Because... You you pick them up because they're they are such a good host and they are so hungry and they and they have that work ethic and unless unless we're making TV money there's no way you're gonna be able to hold on to that person and so for me it's it's more about I got to be a part of that rise I got to 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 bring this person up and and then you know hopefully you wrote you you have a contract that doesn't keep them down because you have to control them mm-hmm. and and you know it's it's all about the whole thing growing uh, together. My, um, I'll do mine quickly because I think a lot of people know. I never thought I could make better videos than other people. Like that wasn't a thing. I just went into it hoping I could join the club. You know, like mm. they get. I wanted to play with the people who were who I was watching. You know, Beast in their videos, and it was like if I just got on the map enough that they knew who I was, I could get in their lobbies and I could play with them. And it was this big scheme if you call it that to make friends <laughs> you know like that's all i wanted i just like i, I <clears> wanted to have like ah if if me and hutch and c nanners were on the same team we'd win every game we'd just dominate <laughs> every lobby and and that was the that was why i started there was no money i did it before i would have see i would have never guessed that because out of out of the tubers of like kind of a range of sizes you you seem to or either you guys seem to be the the ones that have the closest uh, mindset of monetization and money that, as myself. <laughs> well, I guess. Or you kind of fell into true. that. Yeah. It, it, well, it there started wasn't was there was no money first. It, yeah. It, it, exactly. Yeah, we all did it for the for the for yeah. kind of the the exposure and the experience yeah. at first. And I then, had a similar um, experience to you. I like the I was watching Zer Grizz montages, him playing Call of Duty Four, and I was so obsessed with him. Like I'd show my like real life friends, I'd be like, "Come here, 
come here. And we'd be sitting around the desktop computer, like, watching this guy play Call of Duty 4. I'm like, when I play, I shoot, like, three people in a row with my M16, and then I usually die. This guy's spinning off root. And I, I, I never considered that it's, uh, it's edited. It's a montage <laughs> of months of work for him. I'm like, he just gets up because <laughs> there were no other videos like that. He was the right. he was the first guy up there right. spinning around, and I was I was like, I have to do this. So I messaged him on. Uh, I must have been an early fan because I messaged him on uh, Xbox Live, and I was like, Hey, I'd like to play with you sometime. I like your videos, and he sent me a friend request. So I started playing with him a bit. And he told me, like, you know, he's like, you need this Dazzle Platinum Capture card, and you need oh, this Oh, I remember that. that piece of shit. Yeah, and I went and bought all that <laughs> shit, and my videos were just, I, the, the quality was just so shitty, I didn't do it for a while. And But but that was the that was the original reason, it was I had, uh, had seen his videos, and I wanted to make uh, gaming videos like, like those. I wanted to make a montage of my cool Call of Duty ki kills. And then, of, and then, of course, I was doing, like, the, the Russian accent and Skype with you guys one day. I don't know who all was in there. I know Wings was in there, and um, there's a couple other guys, and, and somebody just thought that was hilarious. And uh, they're, they're like, you should make a, a YouTube channel of that guy. And I'm like, nobody wants to see that shit. Nobody, nobody cares about that guy. And initially the whole shtick was that, like, this is a guy who, who takes Call of Duty way too seriously, and he, uh, he's a Russian immigrant to America. And he was dumb. He's yeah he he's he's not quick to like pick up the American way of life so so like one of his things is like he'll he'll on, he'll only use like the Russian weapons in the game he's he's like you know the, the this M16 is American piece of pussy plastic and, you know, <laughs> about it, like but there was a thing wood and steel and blood and just like going on and just being ridiculous about my hatred for campers and such but uh, but there were also the stories I, I know that's what you're gonna say. The, the UPS guy was coming in my head, right? The, yeah. He, oh, I'm sorry about that. He totally didn't trust the UPS guy. This this mysterious person in a total brown outfit would leave a box by the door and just leave. And he's like, I don't trust it. I'm not going out there. You know, and... and AGB come in a brown, brown truck. <laughs> So they, that's fucking, he's got three letters, UPS, KGB, I don't know. He's, I've been under the bed for five hours. His girlfriend was clearly a prostitute, and he's the only guy that didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know she's like, you know, really friendly with other guys, and he didn't understand <laughs> it. <laughs> and, it. But then he turned into like a super cool badass spy type guy. Yeah, because they... I I, at, at some point, I thought it would be cool to show um, like, the difference between an MP5 in real life and, the, and an MP5 in Call of Duty. For, Call of Duty, and it sort of went from there. Yeah, my went from there was um, guided by the feedback I got, and I guess monetization, right? So when I was doing my channel like just for fun, like I had no profit motive at all, I uploaded every like three to seven days, and um, I mostly gave tips. Like I, I had figured out how to play better than average. And I didn't think I was better than average on the sticks. So I was like, all right, here, you know, knowledge and tactics is, is why I do well when I make my decisions, etc. Whereas other people, it seems like they just have laser accurate aim and they play on 10 sensitivity and all that. So I was sharing knowledge and tips. And then every so often I'd go off, off topic and just, you know, talk about things that are in my head or opinions or philosophies. And they got such great feedback that now I feel like that's the core of the channel, you know, yeah. People don't want me to tell them how to play COD. That's done. No, yeah, the nobody wants that time, anymore. The first time I saw the first time I saw your channel, I think you were you were doing uh, Mail Mondays. I think that's the first time I saw it, and I and that's when I subscribed. Yeah, AKA oh, uh, answer questions about girls and masturbating. <laughs> that bugs uh, we me, did man. a couple of those. We did a couple of those together. I really enjoyed doing those. I'm up <laughs> to do that. Anytime you want to do another Mail Monday with me, I, I would be happy to do that. Really, really, really fun. Problems, uh -oh. man, it'd be pretty cool. <laughs> it was funny because I would do Mail Mondays, and it was always really serious, right? I take it. Mm -hmm. I try to filter out anything that seemed fake. I get a lot of fake questions, but um. You know, when I brought Kyle in, we just choose the zaniest ones. Like, yeah, my dad, he, he got drunk and he fell out of his semi, banged his head, and now he's dead. I'm like, oh, I wonder what FPS Rush's take is on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those uh, were always fun. I, I I would always give them, like, terrible advice. I think the one guy like, had two girls and, and he didn't know how to pick which one. I was like, fuck them both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't be pussy. Uh <laughs> But yeah, then, so the content was kind of guided towards the positive feedback I got. The daily uploads were, I guess it was probably an ambition thing, right? You know, like I, Wings of Redemption told me that he calculated his views and his um, CPM, the like how much you get paid per thousand views. You guys know that, but they might not. It was 80 grand. And I was like, 80 grand, wow, that sounds so amazing. And then I, 
like I got partnered and I did like my run rate after a week or so. And it was like less than five grand. And I was like, Oh, well maybe I should work harder. So, uh, so then I started uploading daily and that, uh, you know, it, it was a good run. That was a good year for wings. That, that, I, was, that, that may have been wings best year. Right. Yeah. He, I mean, he was obviously like, he was Modern killing Warfare it too. He was like one of the King of the Hills. And he uploaded, so, he sent so many videos to Machinum. That's where, and, and yeah. those had a, those had a premium CPM attached to them. And, and he always had, like he was, and he was on, who, whoever was supposed to be taking him out of Dropbox to like process and upload. He was on Anthony. that guy's back like a big fucking 400 pound <laughs> monkey. Like, yeah. come on, get it up, get it up. What's get with it up? you? You just <laughs> uploaded the Ken Burton video. I'm all over that guy. You gotta, <laughs> you should only be doing Ken Burton videos when there's no wings videos. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was did a good job at, uh, at at representing himself in that way because you had to, or they wouldn't get your shit up. Uh, oh, up they wouldn't there. find your fucking videos in that Dropbox forever. I had two <laughs> that I left in there that just never went up. They're just still never in there. They're, they're still, still in there. there. Yeah, probably. They're still there. Yeah, and they were always like, "Yeah, it, his name was Shore Wars." They're like, "He works so hard. He's so great at his job." Yet everyone he served was like, "No, no, he's not great at his job till my videos." Every time you, you message him, and it's like, "Hey, we didn't get paid uh, this month or last month <laughs> or the month before." <laughs> And I was just wondering if this is a real operation for doing it. I'm seeing scheme. fucking Playtex ads on my videos. I'm not seeing any of that Playtex money. I remember asking Hutch. I was like, man, you can tell me if this whole thing's been a pyramid scheme. I've seen that shit before. I just need to know. I just need to know now. Because I've done the math and they owe me a lot. And, and are they going to give me that money? He's like, yeah, man. They gave me my money. I was like, well, how much was it? And he told me. I was like, all right. Well... <laughs> All right, then, if you say so. But then, like, two and a half more months went by. Yeah, they, uh, they used to pay quarterly, but it was, like, a quarter delayed. So you'd upload a video in July and get it next year. <laughs> it was, like, yeah. wow. it was, it was yeah. crazy. On top of that, they had, like, a 15-day, like, late period they could have. So, mm -hmm. in reality, you would get paid six months plus 15 days after you uploaded the video. And is this all? Is this all early Machinima days? Yeah, early oh, Machinima. Yeah, dude. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the the stories I heard about Machinima <laughs> and Maker early days, it's just like shit that does it. Like it's just the craziest I hated thing. When they uploaded our videos, because you guys were decently big in the beginning part, or at least Kyle was and Wings was. But for me, just some shithead, they'd upload my videos at like eleven fifty eight p.m. on a <laughs> Sunday, and I'd come back the next day, and it'd be like nine hundred. It's like, are you shitting me? This isn't gonna go go up. Ever. They used to hook me up. I get the last upload of the day. I know typically. you did. Yeah. I used to have to link to my Machinima videos from my main channel and be like, "Hey, uploaded it at one thirty a.m. <laughs> on a school night." So that's great news for all my viewers. <laughs> if they you get out of math, check me. it out. I, I think when when I was sending them content like to Machinima, there just weren't <laughs> very many directors at all. It was um, I know I signed before C Nanners did, so there just there were there were like maybe six or eight like new Call of Duty uh, guys, and then like the old guard like Ken Burton and uh, what's his name that sells women's shoes. Um, Junkyard. Junkyard. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a knock against uh, women's shoe salesman. I didn't know he did that. He sells, sells uh, Western attire, I think. So <laughs> there's the, the cowboy shirts with the ruffles on them and the hats and the men's cowboy boots. And, I guess, yeah, women's. I'm familiar with Western attire. Yeah. But <laughs> there, <movies. laughs> there was no competition. <laughs> I think they were only uploading like two videos a day on that like couple million subscriber channel. And it'd be like mine and like one other. And the, uh, the other one might not even be that good. And mine would just be like like the basics, the ABCs and stuff. Like, this is how the prestige system works. Because there just wasn't another video that, that stopped and told anybody. And that shit was getting like half a million views each and stuff. I was like, this is going to work out nicely. And then they started uploading 20 videos a day. 27. <laughs> 27 a day. Wow. 27 it's videos worse a day. worse than the last. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, I... Uh, I try. I think I once I tried to send in one tip video ever. And I know Phil's not familiar with my channel, but I tried to start it out with like watching people on YouTube doing the video games, and I was like, I'm fucking good at this shit. I can do this better than they can, and it, I was really wrong. I was not nearly <laughs> as good at the game. I like sat there with my dazzle out for like four hours, like yeah. God, this guy got a thirty and two. Why can't I get a thirty and two while no scoping or doing something? So I just gave up on that and started doing just 
shooting the shit and off the cuff story time stuff. Nothing to do with video games at all. I would reuse gameplay five, ten times. People would complain. <laughs> it was just me talking. And it was That's, awful gameplay. And, like, yeah, it, it, it wasn't like you had a winner. Like he'd play Nazi zombies, get to level six, and be like, perfect. I'll just keep using <laughs> <this in there." laughs> Didn't give a shit. I'd have a huge audio file, talk for about nine minutes, then cut it wherever, upload it. Everyone's just happy to see a video. Then do the same thing a little later. It worked out great. So that's what you get with a small audience. But the one time I did send in a tip video to Machinima, I just got reamed. Just reamed. Just, <laughs> you fucking idiot. You, so mean, you moron. Dude, I, they I think they took it down. I'm they terrified. Were... <laughs> I'm just terrified at the idea <laughs> like, of posting take... a video posting a video to a channel that's not mine. Or, God forbid, if someone, like, people ask, like, while you're gone, can someone fill in? That's the worst idea ever. Mm. That person's gonna get destroyed. Oh. Yeah. Just as a human being. <laughs> just dead. I like so I like going to those channels, like your style channel or back in the day, even like Ray William Johnson, where he'd have to have like a like three weeks of like preparing his viewers, like, hey, what's up? Equals three guys. In four weeks from now, we're gonna have a new bubbly guy behind the you know, <laughs> fucking camera. Was, so don't be too pissed. And then that one dude would come out and be like, "Hey, I'm here to you know do the do the hey look at this cat." And everybody's like, "The fuck this guy!" <laughs> oh, <Ray."> like, <laughs> why wouldn't he tell us? <laughs> no, I uh, I was so jealous uh, at the time. Not not because of viewers, not because of anything, but because he could have someone like Fluffy or Casim G just fill in, and everyone's like, "That was good." And I'm like, "Really?" <laughs> Someone could just fucking do the job and everyone's happy. <laughs> That's so good. Uh.